Now then guys, welcome back to Range 23. My name's Bob and today, as you've probably already guessed, we're going to be taking a look at the Guncraft Gen 2 WMR AR15. And that is quite a mouthful. <laughs> so these are a UK legal Section 1 semi-automatic AR15, chambered in 22 Magnum rimfire. And these are made by Guncraft right here in the UK. If you're, if you're still unfamiliar with what 22 Magnum is, it's a rimfire cartridge, it's got about two to three times the energy of a 22 long rifle. I won't get too into the weeds of the differences between the rounds and, and the guns that fire them. I've already got a video on that detail and everything you need to know, so check it out if it's something you're interested in. I'll, I'll post a link in the description. But suffice to say, it is you versus the guy she told you not to worry about. So in typical Range 23 fashion, I'll give you a brief overview with a gun. I'll caress it in all the right places, see what makes this thing tick. Um, we'll, we'll open up the gun after that, we'll have a look at the differences between this and the Gen 1 and finally we'll get it out on the range, see how it shoots and uh, see if it's actually any good. But quickly guys, just before I get into the video, just want to let you know this is not my gun. I've been sent this for review by Guncraft, um, I haven't paid for it, I haven't been paid for it or anything like that. Uh, Rob just got in touch and said would you like to do a, a video on it, so yes yeah, send it up, I'll give it a go. This is Guncraft's kind of test and, and kind of demo gun, I guess you would say. It's the same one that's been out to a couple of reviewers. It, it went out to Neil from Rack and Load, he did a review on it. Um, and on that note, we all know that Neil from Rack and Load is... Uh... Sorry. It's the lefty. <laughs> Which means he's had his hands all over this gun. Um, so obviously when it arrived with me, some precautions needed to be taken. Right then guys, now that's out of the way, let's take a look at this rifle. Start at the back, we've got a classic kind of M4 style stock. It is complete with that AR battle rattle for all time sakes. We've got a six position buffer tube, standard castle nut end plate, feeding onto a set of forged receivers, more on them in a minute. Uh, we've got, everything else is very standard kind of mil spec on this, obviously as you can see, we've got an A2 pistol grip. Standard uh, 90 degree throw safety there, bolt catch, magazine release, etc. the trigger. The trigger is a single stage, I'd estimate it's about six or seven pound pull with my gauge, but it is uh, quite a nice crisp let off and it does also have a nice audible tactile reset to it. So it's a more than capable trigger. Um, moving forward from there, we're coming to a 12 inch free floated handguard. Now this one's using something new called M-Lock. Uh, I'm not sure if that'll catch on. Um, it's basically like a weaker version of uh, Picatinny, but with more fastenings. Um, I mean, you've already got quad rail, so why would you try and improve on perfection? But um, whatever. It's got M-Lock at the 3, 6 and 9 o'clock positions, but not the intermediate positions. But fortunately, it does have pick rail running the full length of the top of the rail. Underneath that, obviously, we've got our barrel. This one is sporting a 14.5, and on the end of that, we've just got an A2 bed cage flash hider. In the box that this gun comes with, you'll get supplied one 13 round magazine, which will come with a set of enhanced feed lips on it as well. Uh, a nice color manual um, detailing how to look after the gun, how to operate the gun, uh, and the safety side of it as well. So let's take a look at a couple of those parts in more detail. We'll, we'll start with these receivers. These are forged receivers, um, forged out of 70-75 T6 aluminium, which is exactly what we want to be seeing with a set of receivers. It puts them right at the top of the pile in terms of strength and everything like that. Um, they're nicely finished, the anodizing is good, the engraving is nice and clean on them. They are T-marked as well, but the standout thing about them for me is the fitment. There is absolutely no slop, no wobble, no sound or anything between them. They're almost one single piece. Uh, to the point where I, when I got this gun, I, I rung Rob to see how we got the fitment on the forged receivers. Uh, so nice, it's the nicest I've come across. 
and basically he took me through the process they, they get the forgings in and they're all finished and machined here in the UK and they go off as a pair and they're fully machined as a pair the upper and lower so they can get that fit really good also things like the pinholes and things like that are drilled out to smaller tolerances and honed so they're, the, the tolerances are super tight and um, it's just kind of the advantage of working in small batches you can put a bit more time into it and and um, get a better end product and it really shows with these receivers you'd think as well with them being kind of so tight and, and no slopping them that they'd be hard to take down but absolutely not at all and um, the pins come out easily by hand and they're only standard mil spec pins there's no no fancy easy takedown pins or anything with them um, yeah really really impressed with them really nice uh, anyway enough about me um, going on about receivers uh, we'll move forward have a look at this barrel this is again made by Sasson Engineering, same as the Gen 1s. Um, this is a 14 inch barrel, 14.5 uh, actually measures, but they are available in 12, 14, 16 and 18 inches. They're a medium weight profile, which is possibly a little chunky than you get with a lot of other rim fires, um, but they do thin out towards the end there. And as well as that, they're a button rifled one in 14 twist, which is pretty standard for WMR. And they're all finished at the muzzle with a half by 28 UNEF thread for putting suppressors and things like that on them. So overall, I guess it's it's a bit of a basic bitch to look at really, um, as ARs go. It's not very exciting, but it's extremely well built and we've got obviously high quality components in the barrel, the bolt and all the working parts. Um, it's very nicely put together. Like I say, the fit and finish of them receivers is sublime. Uh, we've got good stake on the gas key. Everything else is tight as a drum. Um, well, apart from that, apart from that stock, everything else is tight as a drum on this. It's had um, it's had a lot of effort put into it. Do you know what I mean? It's a good it's a good build. It's nice to see. It's rock solid. Um, and in terms of like the furniture, obviously, probably a lot of people want to swap things out on this. And I kind of understand why Guncraft went for the kind of basic AR furniture because everyone's going to swap out to whatever they want you know grips and stocks and everything like that. everyone's got their own personal preference so no matter what you put on it people want to swap it out um, and in terms of swapping things out obviously it's a, an AR built to mil spec specification so kind of the world's your oyster realistically you could pretty much change anything you want on this gun So now we've seen a little bit more on the gun, let's take a look at some of the differences internally from the, this gun to the Gen 1. We'll start with the bolt. Um, it looks very similar uh, from a distance, but when you get up close, the underside has got a completely different profile. This hammer reset lug here has been reprofiled and elongated, so it'll work with a lot more aftermarket hammers, which is good, aftermarket triggers. Um, we've also got a new cutout here towards the, the front of the bolt. That is for the bolt hold open. The Gen 1 guns used a catch-22, which would catch the front face of the bolt, which isn't ideal. This one's had a specific cutout made, so it can use a standard kind of 223 mil spec bolt release, which is a big improvement again. We've also got probably the biggest change, I would say, is the location of the extractor. It's been moved up quite a few degrees, which is good for two things. It means, one, when the round is seated on the bolt face, it no longer has to kind of jump through the extractor on the Gen 1 guns. It was positioned lower and it kind of had to squeeze past it. On these now, it just kind of jumps in and sits, nestles into it, which is cool. And the other cool thing about that is you no longer need an enlarged ejection port cut on the upper receiver. You can use a standard uh, profile upper, which is good. It obviously means um, potentially com parts compatibility if you, if you were ever swapping receivers out or anything like that. Um, you've got the ability to do that. So last thing on the bolt is the firing pin itself. It's now made of a new type of steel, which has also been heat treated, so it's much, much harder than the um, Gen 1 firing pin. It's been slightly reprofiled and just ever so slightly raised up as well to kind of alleviate any light striking issues I would guess that's for with, with aftermarket triggers. Moving forward from there to the barrel extension, we've got the feed ramp on the Gen 2. It's a much wider feed ramp and it tapers down towards that barrel. It's also been reprofiled on the top to help guide those rounds in there. And lastly is the ejector. Still the same shark fin ejector, but you can see at the back it's been lengthened slightly by about half an inch or so. And that is so that throughout the bolt's travel, it, that, that ejector is constantly engaged with the bolt and supported by it. And that's important because the Black Dog magazines that these guns use can be quite easily over inserted. They're, they're, they're not the best magazines, the tolerances are a bit loose, you can push them past the magazine stop. And when you've got the bolt back, 
if you if you overinserted the magazine it would contact that ejector and has the potential to bend it so with it being fully engaged with the bolt it's got support on both sides and it'll stop any potential um, issues there which is nice to see as well So in terms of functionality with the gun, let me just put this one back together quickly. Um, in terms of functionality, everything is standard AR-15. There's no difference about it. Charge is the same, safety is the same, everything like that. The only functionality that isn't 100% still, same as the Gen 1s, is the bolt hold open. You do get a manual bolt hold open there, and you can obviously drop the bolt. But with the magazines, there's no true last round bolt hold open. So with an empty magazine, it will hold the mag back but it's just trapped on the follower of the magazine and when you pull that out the bolt will drop put a new magazine in and you'll have to charge it again um, it's no fault of the gun as such um, it's the magazines there's no these black dog mags are the only things available and there's no facility on these for a uh, automatic last round bolt hold open unfortunately So guys, the big question is, do all these changes to the Gen 2 actually work? Is this a, a more reliable gun than the Gen, Gen 1 guncraft? And the short answer I think is yes, definitely, it, um, it, it, they do. Uh, I've, I've had this gun now a little over a month, I put uh, just over 700 rounds through it, all mixed ammunition, I've been shooting in different circumstances on multiple range trips, uh, different magazines been used and things. Um, and I've I've been really impressed with it to be honest. It's I've only had a small handful of stoppages with it, maybe well, less than ten, definitely probably about six, seven stoppages with it. Um, in fact, the the first time I took the gun out uh, to shoot it, I um, loaded up my magazines, and within the first I think ten rounds or so, first magazine definitely, I had a stoppage. I thought like, oh Christ, you know, uh, here we go. Is this going to be par for the course? Am I going to be constantly clearing um, malfunctions, what have you? But I cleared it out. Um, carried on shooting the gun and the gun carried on running I put about 250 rounds through it in that first session and by that one weird stoppage at the start it ran absolutely flawlessly I've been running it suppressed and unsuppressed as well I've done probably 75% of the shooting I'd say has been suppressed with the gun um, and it's it's been running really really well I think I didn't have another stoppage I don't think until about the third time I took it out at about 400 rounds I think it was about the 400 round mark uh, I took it out to shoot some groups actually and within about I think 50 rounds, uh, 60, 70 rounds maybe, I had uh, about four stoppages I think, always the same stoppage, the failure to fully eject, the, the bolt catches the case for it's left the um, left the ejection pot, which I thought was really weird because up until that point like I said it had been running really really well, um, so I called it a day because it was a bit of a write off anyway to fair weather wise, came back, just blew the gun out with an airline, wiped the bolt down, just got rid of some of them, um, some of that grainy residue. Put it all back together, took it out the next day to shoot the groups and it ran absolutely flawlessly. I think shot a load of groups and did some kind of close work with it as well. Put about another 200 or so rounds through it and not single failure. So really, really impressed with that. If you think like 400 rounds is, is, is not a high round count at all to start having maybe issue, occasional issues with a gun. But with a 22 Magnum, it's a lot different to shooting a 22 long rifle. For one, you've got about twice as much powder uh, in, the, in the round. But the residue it leaves is very different as well. 22 long rifles like a kind of cakey, waxy, powdery kind of mess that just gets everywhere. 22 Magnum, it's it's fairly clean, but it leaves these like little grainy balls of, of powder, um, like burnt powder in there, almost like sandy little grains. I've got a, I've got a video on it actually. The powder differences, um, you can check out. And I've been running this pretty heavily suppressed. Probably about 75% of the shooting I've done with this has been with a suppressor on. So it's obviously throwing a lot more shit back into the action as well. And I think potentially it was just perhaps binding up on that bolt there, maybe just causing some causing a bit of a slow um, bit of a slow extraction initially or something like that, potentially. Like I say, uh, only when it was really dirty, um, all I did, pulled the bolt out, sprayed the gun down with a bit of uh, compressed air, wiped the bolt down with an oily rag, stuck it back in, and it went back to running um, flawlessly again. And on that note, the suppressor I was running on this gun was a Wildcat Panther. It was supplied with the gun for the review. Uh, it pairs really nicely with this rifle actually, uh, both in terms of looks and performance. The, the Wildcat is a, an over barrel design, but Wildcat do make these little threaded spaces to kind of push the can forward to clear handguards and things like that. Well, that's, that's what I was running on this setup. Uh, and it 
looks really nice and it's a really clean setup once it's on there. Uh, minimal gap between the, the suppressor and the handguard. Looks really, really clean. It is a slightly higher back pressure can I've noticed than, than a lot of others I've used. Um, but it does do a really, really good job of taming that WMR track. It's a very effective moderator. Uh, and also, I've not had any kind of point of impact shift with it on this gun as well, which is quite nice. And no deterioration to accuracy as well. Group sizes, suppressed and unsuppressed, have been the same. So speaking of accuracy, I did manage to shoot a few groups with this rifle. Managed to get a couple of different ammunitions consistently grouping at about 1.5 MOA with it. Uh, that's me shooting off of a bipod. The conditions were good, the wet, great, should we say. But um, I'm not the best shot either, guys, so you might find you can take them up. But there's a couple of different uh, groups here. There's some CCI. These two are CCI. This, these two are Federal. They're about anywhere from an inch to inch and a half, them ones. Like I say, consistently um, grouping an inch and a half. Uh, never, never more than an inch and a half, should I say. So yeah, I was more than more than happy with that. Like I say, I think if conditions had been slightly better, I'd probably have to get them down to inch groups. That's my experience with WMR ARs, is they're all about inch rifles, I would say. Feed them good ammunition, good conditions, etc. I think that the limiting factor is the is the ammunition, it's not the rifles. I'm sure the rifles are, are extremely accurate, but WMR it's obviously factory loaded rim fire ammunition. Um yeah, but but inch groups, inch rifle is 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 great for a semi-automatic rimfire. That's going to do everything you need it to do. Um, so yeah, can't complain at that at all. So that leads us on to kind of ammo compatibility, and I've I've ran all different kind of ammunitions through this gun: um, 30, 40, and 50 grain, uh, all different makes. Um, I've run. Uh, full metal jacket, I've run lead soft point, I've run flat nose, I've run hollow points, so all kind of ballistic tips um, and everything runs really well in this. The only ammunition it doesn't seem to like is 30 grain. The action really struggles to cycle the 30 grain but you can feel the, the, the very muted recoil impulse from that. But Guncraft do openly say these guns are not designed to run 30 grain, they're designed to run 40 grain and up and I would agree with that's an accurate assessment. I've had, I've had no issues 40 grain and up. Um, I only ran the 30 grain just as a little test really, just you know, for science, uh, just to see what it was like. Um, but yeah, you can you can definitely tell. Um, it's almost like shooting a 22 long rifle when you're using them 30 grains. But yeah, other than that, it's been really, really good with different ammunitions. Just quickly guys, while we're talking about ammos and things, if you are running one of these guns or you're thinking about buying one, whether it's a Guncraft or anything else, um, make sure you run the enhanced feed lips in your magazines. I cannot recommend that enough. Um, it's, it's pretty much a must when running one of these rifles. They're available from uh, Guncraft. It's just a little 3D printed set of feed lips there um, and it just elongates the feed lips over the standard Black Dog magazine uh, feed lips. And honestly, the, the difference these make to the gun is, is phenomenal. You'll, you feel your it'll fall through the floor using them. It's like I say, it's an absolute must. It's what I use in all my guns and all my magazines. Uh, in fact, Guncraft are actually just releasing a slightly revised version where the Philips are ever so slightly shorter, about a mil or two shorter. Uh, something I've touched on before for the Gen 1s is that uh, in my last video. But um, yeah, check them out. It's an uh, absolute must. So guys, whilst we're on the topic of magazines, I'd say that's the kind of only sticking point um, for this platform at the minute. And it's not fault of the guns or anything like that, it's just the Black Dog magazines are still the only magazines available. And whilst they're perfectly functional and serviceable, and especially with those new feed lips on there, capacity-wise they are quite limited. You're looking at like a, I do a 14, a 13 and a 10 round capacity. And there's also no function for a last round bolt hold open on them. Um, if you're unaware capacity wise that they're all the same they're all exactly the same the 10 rounders just have a little stopper in them to, so they won't go all the way down this is a 13 rounder you can tell because a 13 rounder will lock the bolt back like that rounder whilst it looks exactly the same won't lock the bolt back because the follower is ever so slightly shorter so it won't catch that bolt on the way back um, so there's different magazines floating about out there. But yeah, 13, 14 rounds maximum. It's, it's not the best capacity out there, is it? Like I say, that, for me, that lack of a bolt hold open is a little bit annoying as well. But these guns are gaining in popularity in the UK. We've got, I think, three different manufacturers making these now. Uh, we've also seen in the US the BCA upper, uh, Bear Creek Arsenal. They're doing a 22 Magnum upper receiver to sit on a mil spec lower. That's gained a lot of popularity. 
So you never know, if you keep your fingers and toes crossed at night, you might find there's, um, there's some kind of movement with magazines in the future. So yeah guys, it does seem that all these little tweaks and alterations in the Gen 2 have kind of come together to make this a, a really decent platform. Um, I've been really happy with it to be fair, like I say, a small handful of failures when the gun's been dirty, but it very easily resolved just to keep it clean and it keeps on running. You know, it's not ammo fussy, it runs well, it's accurate, it's a good suppressor host. You know, if you've not shot one of these before, I would highly recommend doing it. They are great fun to shoot. Whether you're shooting kind of groups or, or shooting kind of more practical style drills or you're going out hunting vermin or foxing or, or hunting with it, um, it's just absolute heaps of fun, certainly compared to a 22 long rifle. I say certainly if you wanted to push out a bit further than a 22 long rifle, you know, there's, I know a lot of guys who shoot out to kind of like two, 300 yards with this on paper. If you're on the fence maybe about, about buying one of these, if you're unsure, you've maybe read some of the horror stories from the kind of early generation WMRs that we had in this country. Um, believe me, I was there, I was part of that, I know, <laughs> I know all about that. Um, I couldn't understand your trepidation, but honestly, this platform is worlds apart from that. This gun runs, it is a viable, viable gun. Definitely a big step up from the Gen 1s, which themselves were kind of a big step up from what was already out there. Um, got rid of all them teething issues. So yeah, I can't really recommend it enough. If, you're, if you've been kind of sitting on the fence as to whether to buy one of these, I'd say we're, 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 we're there with them really now. We're, we're at the point where they're a good viable option, to be fair. Yeah, guys. Yeah, running really, really well. I'm really pleased with it so far. Feels, uh, feels nice. Ooh, this is getting hot. Right then, guys. That's just about all I've got for you today. Thank you very much for watching, as always. If you've enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up, a big like, smash that like button, share it around as well. Why don't you send the video link to your mum on WhatsApp and confuse her? She won't know what she's watching, but it'll get me views. Uh, <laughs> if you think there's anything uh, anything I've missed or any questions you've got or comments or anything like that, oh, you just want to troll me, get down in the comments section, get typing away, live your best lives, be your best selves, you know, uh, reach for the stars, <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thank you.